All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm thrilled to be joined by Mia Hewitt, who is in Boston today. How are you doing, Mia? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah. And, uh, and Mia, so um, way back in, I think it's 2012, you're running a successful business, but you yeah. didn't feel fulfilled. You went on a journey of education, self-discovery, all of those yes. things, and then eventually created your own uh, aligned intelligence uh, technology. Yeah. And now you help other people, um, you know, find meaning and achievement and, and shine. I think that's the, I yeah. like that. That's the best part about it is you help people shine. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. I really felt back then, um, you know, I grew up poor, so mm. I really, I had it linked in my head that as soon as I became wealthy, that my problems would cease and that I would right. feel like, um, like completely confident, like, um, free to be myself, um, and none of that happened. I was constantly doubting myself, questioning myself all the time. And I was really just completely like blindsided by how can I, how, how can I be so wealthy and feel so inadequate? Mm -hmm. And it just, it just drove me crazy. And, it, and I know a lot of times people hear this and I bring up a lot of their, their stuff for them because they're like, you, you're a multimillionaire and you're mm -hmm. bitching, you know? And it's kind of like, you know, I like to say, it's not that I wasn't grateful. Sure. It's just that I look like a success, but inside I felt like a failure. Mm -hmm. And so I really, I went and hired the best and the best of the industry. I've, you know, I spent about a half a million of, on my own coaching. And what I found um, where I kept s s constantly secretly struggling is I kept feet like it made sense what they would say. They would basically right. say, well, just don't think that way. Just mm -hmm. think differently. Yeah. And I'm like, if I could do that, I would have done it by now. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like there's something missing. Like I knew it didn't make any logical sense why I was struggling, but emotionally I stuff feel, I, I kept feeling like there was something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. So long story short, I, it took a guy, um, one of the, famous guys in our industry. I remember working with him, paid him 50 grand. And I remember him saying to me one day when I said, I'm just not getting it. Like, what do you think I'm yeah. missing? I was really genuinely curious. And he said, Mia, you just need to go in your room and lock the door and not come out until you figure this out. And I thought, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to do that. It, it was an, I had had it. it now yeah. I'm not an overnight success in this business. So it took me mm -hmm. on my first, you know, brick and mortar business. I built that up to a multi-million dollar. This one, it took me six years, John, to uncover what was really stopping me. Right. Because I didn't have a mentor, but here's the gist. We can't think greater than how we actually feel. Mm. So it's actually right. not in the mind that stops us. The mind just backs up that negative um, critic we hear is mm. literally just backing up the emotional feelings we already felt. The right. interesting thing when I uncovered all of this and how to free, because I don't have that critic that runs anymore. There's mm -hmm. no critic anymore. I don't struggle with self-doubt anymore. Um, I can make really great decisions, very fast. When we uncover what it is, it's not what we think. Yeah. It actually happened when we were really young. Mm. And so it creates a pattern or an open loop when we experienced an original trauma. And then that, that emotion, that feeling of something's wrong with us as kids that we internalize it because we don't have a, a conscious right. mind back then. Yeah. yeah. And it and creates... Then, yeah, I was going to say, and then, and then obviously um, you carried that into adulthood and you carry that into, and, and we're going to talk a little bit about sales because that's totally. an area where um, oftentimes you, you, know, yeah. you see people who have all the attributes to be great salespeople, but they're still struggling. And totally. you say that, they, that they're struggling with, um, secretly struggling with something emotional that's holding them back. Always. They've linked in their mind. It's always this, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's always like narrowing it down. They have linked what they want to pain. Right. So if sales is painful, right? What they mm -hmm. want is to do sales because that's how the, but they've linked that to pain they will always self-sabotage because emotionally they haven't cleared up what's stopping them from feeling that way in sales. The truth is 
the truth is all sales is really about um, having an offer that people find that they need and they value that they're willing to exchange, you know, money in exchange for that. That being said, then the sale of it is really all sales is really about the person saying yes to themselves. Mm. It's not even really about us. What right. happens where we as the professional have to be understand how to present that because the reason the reason there's a little piece to that is they never have, they never come with the right problem, right? right. For a problem to exist, the equal and opposite solution must also exist at mm -hmm. the same moment in time. The reason it stays a problem is they have the wrong problem. And so they keep doing the same thing, not getting the result they want. What comes up in sales for them, and it will come up, yeah. is they're going to, once the mind decides it has a problem, it will go to protect the problem. It doesn't mm -hmm. want to be wrong. Sure. Well, if yeah, you don't yeah. know that and you don't understand that's what's going to happen in the sales process and you make it mean something about you when their stuff comes up, because <laughs> yeah. it will, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And when you've linked pain to what you want in, and sales is painful to you, that's why you constantly sabotage. But when you completely remove yourself, which is really, um, you know, I'm only here in service to serve those. I'm not trying to convince anyone to do anything. I'm really just showing people the truth of what is, has them stopped. Right, right. And then if they choose to say yes to yourself, them right themselves then they join me and i help them like literally take care of that in eight weeks yeah, does that make sense uh, no that makes total sense yeah. because i think i, I think the uh, as you're saying i think is that um we're very good at appropriating everything right so i mean we start off from that point of view and no matter how how as you say uh, what i like about what you say is the intellectual versus the emotional right so intellectually i know i'm dealing with a complete stranger as a prospect yes. never met never met you before yes. whatever yes. so when you come up with these objections and stuff it's it can't it logically or intellectually it can't be anything to do with me personally correct much, right correct but emo but the emotional part of me suddenly decides to appropriate it that's exactly what happens and this is why i say to people all the time you can't think greater than how you feel because it won't make logical sense like it doesn't make logical sense because it's not logical if it was really logical you feel this john if we really operated from the mind and in logic inside the mind mm -hmm. everybody would be skinny because nobody would eat anything that we knew yeah. was gain weight everybody be wealthy because nobody ever it's very simple what has to happen in exchange for for wealth to be created right everybody would be millionaires but none of this is actually intellectual because all emotions are actually, uh, all behaviors are emotional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we do is totally linked to emotions. And if you don't heal that, you will consistently self-sabotage. Mm -hmm. And but the thing is, it's 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 yeah. uh, and and even in in somewhere like um, the, you know the U.S. where maybe people are a little more open to you know therapy or self discovery and all that, yeah. Um, then maybe they are you know I mean I'm just saying from my own background, uh, sure. You know some, but however, people still I think very much avoid going on any kind of journey of self discovery or self awareness because they're very. I mean sometimes they don't know how to do it. I think they don't know thing. how. That is and a, another thing. They're afraid of what they might find. Well, and I love what you just said right there because you're pointing right on it. There. So when the original trauma happened to all of us, every single mm -hmm. person has an experience to trauma, but mm -hmm. we don't think, we don't think of trauma as what a trauma really is. A trauma is in the eye of the beholder. And it's yeah. when a child feels like um, it grows and trust by an emotional bond. And when that emotional bond is broken and they feel like, like totally on their own alone, when they don't know how to process that emotion, that's what creates the trauma. And then they become a way to survive that trauma. So I'm going back to what you said. You said it brilliantly when you said that. Because we were never taught how to process our emotions as children, which is why the trauma happens, mm -hmm. then as an adult, 
we still don't know how to process that emotion. So we're afraid to go there because we're like, what if I go there and hit that ticking Tom bomb? I don't know how to process my emotion, which is what we actually need to learn as a skill. You nailed it. Like that's exactly why the, why it takes me eight weeks. It doesn't take me eight weeks to heal them. It takes me eight weeks to have them learn themselves how to process their emotions and so that they never get stuck and stopped or struggling again. And so that they have real skill and therefore they can live free because now I'm not concerned if someone says something, first of all, I don't get triggered anymore because everything mm -hmm. is the trigger is coming from the original trauma. Right. Yeah. The second thing is if someone says something, even that was like judgmental or whatever, mm -hmm. I can be with that conversation and not make it mean anything because I know how to process my emotions. Right. Yeah. And I love what you just said there about triggers, because I do think that that's the other thing is, um, is that people unfortunately don't identify and recognize their own triggers. Right. And that's what totally. happens often in a situation where everything may be going fantastically. And then somebody says something or something happens that, that, uh, that triggers something that's yeah. completely unrelated and then everything just falls apart. Yep. It's always linked to the original trauma. Mm -hmm. every single time. And it's every single time. And it can be something simple, like the, the gentleman I just got off the call with, his trauma, and they, it's very, you know, my book will show sure. you how to find it. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I wrote the book, because I right. wanted people to know the truth. I wish somebody would have told me this in my 20s. I'm 52. Mm -hmm. It would have saved me a hell of a lot of time and money, <laughs> John. <laughs> I would have really loved this book. I wrote the book mm -hmm. for people so that they don't have to spend all their life, like, you know, trying to find something they can't see. Um, because it isn't visible to the eye. Yeah. Um, it's an emotion, right? It's in an emotional state. Um, but like, it can be very simple, John, like the gentleman right before this conversation, you know, I helped him find his core trauma, even though he had read my book, mm -hmm. he didn't know specifically where it was. And what right. his was, was it happened before he was five years old and he remembers being chased down a hallway. It was Halloween party and some yeah. adult thought it was funny. And they chased him in a costume and then had, and he was so petrified. He ran down the hallway. He was able to lock himself in the room. But here's why this matters. He made it mean that the world is a scary place. Mm -hmm. that he can't trust other people because he never knew yeah. he could trust other people before. Right. And yeah, that yeah. there was something wrong with him for that man to have chased him. He must have been a bad boy and there's something wrong with him. So can you see, it doesn't have to be something yeah. so huge. <laughs> it doesn't have to mean you were yeah. like beaten or yeah, yeah. small. No, but yeah, yeah, but exactly. But you said that's a small thing, but there's three major things that come out of it. Like, you know, feeling of lack of self-worth and the world's a scary place and I can't remember the other one, but I mean, it's three yes. major, three and major. Other people can't things. be trusted. Other and so can you trusted, see, yeah. can you see how that would affect him in sales? For sure. Absolutely. Right? So he, so he would go into every sales situation, um, you know, feeling, uh, I can't trust, I can't trust that's, people involved exactly in this. Right. It's a that's scary, exactly. this could go sideways very quickly. Um, can you yeah, feel that? I mean, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. So why is it that, why is it then? Here's the thing that I always find that the, the hardest thing when I see with people who are struggling to be the be the best version of themselves or whatever, yes. it always is around their lack of self awareness, right? And sure. and this is, but it's such a hard thing. I mean, you can try and tell people, oh, yeah, you know, maybe you want to do a little bit of self discovery, or whatever. But people, it's a hard thing to try and explain to people, yeah, um, self awareness. And for me, it's the number one thing that holds people back. Totally, totally. Um, you know. So here's the thing. So when we created that trauma, and you'll really appreciate this, um, when we when the when I say when that trauma happened to us, and we created that un, that um, that pattern that starts running, we created our false self. That's the birth of the ego. Right. So we all have an ego, right? Mm -hmm. And so what happens is the ego's job, which is not a bad thing. I know Ryan Holiday wrote the book, The Ego is the Enemy. It is not the enemy. It's actually, we created it as a way to survive an experience we didn't mm -hmm. know how to emotionally process. But right. like, feel for it. So if that's what's really happening, 
Can you feel that the reason why people aren't open to it is the very thing that is they're using to protect themselves to try to never have that experience happen again is the thing that's blocking them from right. the awareness that they need that would heal the trauma and would set themselves free. Uh -huh. So, yeah. So basically like their comfort blanket is really a barrier. This is the total, this is why it drives me nuts that <laughs> it's all in the mind so that you can't find it in the mind. Mm -hmm. The mind blocks it from being seen. So like, yeah, here yeah. we go again. That's the self-sabotaging pattern. That's why I was so pissed off for so long, you know, <laughs> going, doesn't anybody know how to solve this? Like, mm -hmm. how can there be not one expert that can help me? I went to five different therapists. Um, I've mm -hmm. gone to, t I've done tons of programs and worked with tons of, nobody understands that. And it would drive me nuts. I never knew I would be the one actually to solve it for people, but I was just so determined. I mean, how good is money? How good is money, John, if you can have all this money and still feel like that? Yeah, it, it's no, it's no good at all. Because it's not, good. It, um, it, it, not at all, because you're not happy. You're not making people no. around you happy. And you're not, no. you, and, you know, money's not, you're not using money in a good way either. Probably. No, it just feels like, what was it all for? What's the point? Mm -hmm. Why am I yeah. getting up in the morning? <laughs> I'm going to feel like this. It's just so, you know, oh my gosh, it feels terrible. I just want people to know the truth. It doesn't, you don't ever have to feel that way again. You can really heal this. And I mean, heal it where the voice doesn't run. Mm. I don't have any voice that runs. Really be free to be you. No longer trying to, you know, like not react or avoid situations or, right. I not, you know, you don't have to have that anymore. And I just yeah. feel people should know the truth. Yeah, no, I, I think it's absolutely fantastic because I also think yeah. that that's where we're seeing the uh, in many ways, you know, people have um, and then people substitute things. And that's why people end up, you know, in, in, in various situations, but also people end up, uh, you know, with a lot of conflict and anger and all of that. And, and right? we could we could definitely do with less of that. Yeah. And then it breaks down everything, right? Because that same fear of like not af being afraid to really go there because it's going to like, we don't know what to do mm -hmm. with those emotions. Yeah. Then, then not only block us in sales, they block us in our relationships yeah. and with our children and, you know, with our clients and they, it just keeps going. And so, mm -hmm. yes, I mean, I used and, to, back then I used to be afraid of certain types of personality types used to, because, um, that's how the trauma happened. It, mm -hmm. Mine was with my father and anyone that used to be anything like that were very domineering in the past right. would like literally just have me become the dumbest person in the, in the room. My brain would shut off. I wouldn't know what to say. I would say the wrong things or I'd say nothing at all. <laughs> 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 I, I laugh i think that's so hysterical now but it used to be a real mm -hmm. a real problem <laughs> yeah and it just shows you i mean and obviously from from your success it just showed yeah. you it's shown you that um you know that if you do that work and you confront it um you know the totally. changes that can can come about well listen yeah. um mia this has been fascinating and right. all of mia's information is going to be in the contributor bio but before we go yeah. i mean please do tell people a little bit more about your aligned intelligence program. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, they can go, you know, just your listeners can go and get it for free. They can download my book for free. They can go to Mia meant for more book.com. And all they need to do is put in a password. I know it's going to be down below, but the mm -hmm. it's one word free book. So capital right. F and then just all the rest, lowercase free book, all one word, and they can get this book for free, but it is really it is exactly what I wish somebody would have given to me so many years ago. It will help them. I wrote it in a story so it's mm -hmm. so that they could unravel it for themselves. So there's question, you know, I literally wrote it in the way they can ask themselves their own, the questions inside of that. I am in the book. Um, I am both Mia and Sue is the name I chose for my younger self. And it was right. what I wish I would have been asked and how to unravel it all. So you can find what's missing and really set yourself free. Yeah. And I think, uh, to be honest, I think given where we are today, we've been, we're, we're going through this strange, you know, crisis with the virus. Yeah. We're going through yeah. social upheaval. We're going through so many things that yeah. I think if ever there was a time to do some self-discovery, now is the time. Totally. Um, I know, I know that that is definitely why a lot of people have been reaching out to me. They're like, okay, I'm sure. ready. Cause they've got yeah. the time number one or the time yeah. it made time for them. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, exactly. But maybe better late than never. Right? And, and you know, and I think maybe the universe is telling everybody something. You know, there's the right? time to take take stock and really That's look right. at things, right? That's All right. right. Listen, Mia, this has been fantastic. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. See you all soon. Thank you.